Welcome back to the second half of this marathon cognac educational tasting thing. Um, so in the first half, I introduced the idea that um, maybe there are, you can really think of cognac as being two different regions. People think of cognac and they think bling, they think money, um, and they think advertising and branding and all, and sort of huge international firms, the big four. I already talked about that. Um, but the other side of cognac, once you eliminate that from consideration, starts to look more like Armagnac. It looks like smaller, uh, a lot of independent producers, you know, trying to get dist distribution where they can and often, um, you know, producing with more integrity than the big guys. Um, and uh, so here, so I wanted to open this up with a thought that I've, I've discussed in other uh, reviews. Um, that you, if you're gonna go out and buy a cognac, uh, you can just apply some objective filters to filter down, you know, what you're what you're buying, right? Um, in this case, a very easy objective filter to, to narrow things down is look for cognacs bottled anywhere above forty percent. Um, there aren't that many of them. Now, I, I will admit uh, the the Paul Giro, which is now sitting over there. Um, kind of, you know, kicked my ass a little bit, uh, kind of uh, showed me the error of my ways and thinking that, you know, in underrating things that were bottled at 40%. Um, but nevertheless, you know, I think as a, as a rule of thumb, starting w at, you know, 40 and a half and above, uh, it's not a bad way of going about it. So what I've got done here is we're going we're, we're gonna to redo our cognac tasting with only things that have been bottled above 40%. So I've got a Jean Filiou here. I've got a Bard Seth, which isn't a real brand, but we'll talk about that. And I've got a Daniel Beaulieu. Um, all right, so uh, uh, let's, so, uh, uh, oh, um, Regions. I never talked about Regions in the last video. Okay, so these two are from Grand Champagne. This, this is from Petite Champagne. What the hell does that mean? Um, okay, so like everything in, in France in terms of production, there are, uh, uh, it's organized, cognac is organized by regions. Uh, so kind of in the center of the growing region, you have the, the uh, Champagne um, region, fine Champagne, you'll, you'll sometimes see it. There, there's regulations on exactly what they can be, but um, basically right in the center, you've got Grand Champagne, which is considered the best, even though often is isn't. Um, surrounding that, you've got Petit Champ, the little Champagne. This has nothing to do, by the way, with the, uh, the wine growing region in Northeast France where they make bubbly. This is just, you know, it's it's the champagne and cognac. I can't do, do, do any better than that, y'all. Um, there are other regions outside there, though. There's the Borderies, which is right uh, right next to the actual city of Bordeaux. Um, uh, there's also the, the, the Bois, um, the various Bois regions, the, the woods. So you've got the fine woods and the, uh, the and there's, there's lots of woods. Um, there's the, like the big woods and the good woods, and there's many different woods, and they produce some excellent wine. The, the interesting thing about the woods is um, most of the time, if, if a lot of, if majority of of, uh, of woods-based cognacs don't advertise themselves as such because they don't have a great reputation, and I wish they would change that. I wish they would, you know, step up and say, we are from the woods and we make, you know, kick-ass brandy there. Anyhow, um, so that's a, you know, very basic primer on, on the regions. Um, so we got, all these are from the Champagne, the Champagne region, so right in the center. Um, this is from Petite Champagne, which is more on the outside. Um, all right, let's get started. Uh, Jean Filiou, um, terrific producer. This is the their entry level uh, uh, Pouillard. I don't know. There's so much glare. So I, we had to turn the in, interior lights on, and I think there's a lot of glare now. So um, sorry about that. It also comes in this cool box, um, which you can keep pasta in if you like. Uh, all right. Um, I think this is this is eight years old. They they there's gestures on the site. Again, it's it's France. It's always gestures. There's gestures on the site towards this being eight, eight years old. It's but um, what got me notice about it, aside from the fact that it's bottled at a a hefty forty two percent alcohol, um, is the fact that it's being brought in by Heavenly Spirits, who also bring in. Um, some Calvas and some Armagnacs, particularly some Armagnacs that I like. Um, 
I mentioned in the last video that you should get to know your importers and the, the, the character of the importers because that tells you about what's in the bottle. Uh, Heavenly Spirits is just a wonderful little importer of, uh, not, not even that little anymore, but um, importer of uh, a sort of more independent, uh, value-driven um, French spirits. So, you know, I wanted to try uh, what, they, what they had in this. <clears throat> all right, 42% alcohol. I'm, so what I'm going to do with all these is run through them once, add a little bit of water after I finish off with them, and then we'll run through them again with a, with a little bit of, um, of water in them to open them up. And with this beast to, to kind of prove it down a little bit, um, we'll get to that in a second. All right. Jean Pouillou, La Pouillade, um, from, the Glen, from the Grand Champagne, probably bottled around 2020. Yeah, this is nice. Um, this is, you would never mistake this for an, Ar for an Armagnac. You're just not getting the same woodsy aggression on the nose. This is very, very floral. Um, like lilacs, just wildflowers everywhere. Um, some strawberries, some Turkish delight. Um, a little bit of that rusty penny thing I was getting on some of the, the cognacs in the last video, but... It's more like Rusty Penny, uh, like mixed with Fig Newton, honestly. It's it's sort of a Figgy Penny. Um, um, there's some orange soda in this, uh, um, oddly enough, like a like Fanta note. Um, this is not Orange Fago, this is Fanta, this is the good stuff. Um, there's hints of oak. I can tell this is aged, I can tell there's oak there, but it's, it's really much more reserved than um, even the Jean Filiou was. Balanced, classy. It does come off as young. Um, um, don't ask me to justify that. I can tell it's a little bit young. Fresh, lychee fruit. Um, um, herbal tea, uh, different. Don't ask me to nail down an herbal tea. It just sounds, it's just, that's kind of what I'm getting. Um, a little bit mineral, like a uh, flint. I'm getting mineral mi minerality on lots of these cognacs. I think it's a thing with them. And it's kind of like a Gewürztraminer note. Like, um, I'll, you know, forget the crap from like from like you know Washington State or whatever. This is like real Alsatian, serious Gewürztraminer. We're getting you know a little oiliness, a little you know. Um, you know, stone fruitiness, lychee fruit again on the palate. Oh. It's only 42%, but man, that makes a difference. And it's just, it's just beautifully balanced. This is, this is nice. Terrific balanced, very floral again. I can tell, okay. Um, this is not filling out my mouth with oak. I can tell, you know, this is not, you know, 20, 30 years old. This comes across as, you know, I would doubt the the, the oldest components in this are more than maybe 12 or so. Maybe maybe we're getting into the, in the mid teens, but nothing more than that. Um, um, floral. That orange Fanta note again. Um, limestone. Well, limestone with majority, but other rocks in there as well. Some marzipan, a little like um, candied nuts. Turkish delights again. The, the um, puer tea again. Man, these are good. Um, uh, dates, dates is a big thing. Um, my daughter just started eating, eating dates. She, she loves them. I don't, I have no idea why. Um, there are some wood tannins. The wood tannins are, are, you know, not too aggressive, but you know, they're a little pushy, but pleasantly so, you know, um, especially in the back end on the finish, the, the, the wood kind of closes in on you. But again, it's, it's nice. It's quite light and refreshing. Um, totally different style from, from the Hen the Hennessy's or even the Doucet from uh, the last video. 
Um, there's a little, okay, no, wait. There's a little bit of like, you know, raisiny, oaky thing going on. But it's much more dominated by flowers. Ooh, there's like a sweet potato thing. Oh, definitely. And like, uh, um, but like smoked sweet potatoes, like you, you, you kind of had them in your smoker for a little while. Um, some, uh, like island cuisine, like scotch bonnet pepper jerk sauce. Um, man, this is nice. Uh, okay. I'm going to give this a little squirt of water and we'll come back to it. This is, by the way, I, this is 60 bucks. Um, Which, I mean, even an Armagnac or something like that is, is especially once you're getting into American brandy, some of the big name French oak producers, Los Calas. I mean, this is, this is not expensive and um, it's not old, but wow, I, it, is, it is shocking me with how good it is. All right, um, well, let's go to the, uh, the Bard Seth. Um, so what do we got here? This is Bard Seth, uh, single crew, um, uh, uh, petite champagne cognac. Um, but it does say on here, limited unchill filtered release. I, I don't know. Can you kind of get a look at that? Um, and it's bottled at 43.2%. Now, here's the thing. If you go on the internet to try to research Bard Seth, uh, you will not find anything really. Um, uh, th because they aren't, so far as I can tell, a real producer. The clue again comes in the importers. This is being imported by Premium Brands Limited in Bardstown, Kentucky. Um, now, any bourbon heads watching this will have be having like a brain itch right now, thinking, "Where the hell have I heard that Premium Brand? I have heard that before. Where is that from?" You've seen that before on things like Pure Kentucky, um, Noah's Mill. Um, that you know, this is the Willet people. Um, this is, this is the, the premium is the, the name they would use way back in the day before they started re distilling their own stuff again. Um, when they were doing independent bottlings of bourbon, but not just bourbon, other, other stuff too. And I think what's, you know, there's, it's still a little bit shady over there at Willet. Um, but I think this is one of theirs. I think they bought a lot of petite champagne, um, cognac and just kind of bottled it under their own name. Um, and I'm okay with that, uh, right? You know, it's, this is not, this, this also is not particularly expensive, um, uh, especially for an XO. I mean, I mean, XO cognacs can get up um, from the, especially from the big guys, the big producers can get up into the, you know, 200-ish dollar range, which is ridiculous, but you know, that's kind of where we are. Um, okay, Bard Seth Petite Champagne XO. On the nose. Actually very ashy um, and very pepper. It's, it's um, again, uh, we're, we're getting a little bit more back towards the standard style. This is pleasantly oaky and raisiny. raisiny. Um, it's just not quite in the same league as this guy, on, especially in the nose. It's, it's a little bit, um, in, in a way it reminds me of... Um, that sacred bond, the, the Christian Brothers thing I had. Um, it's got like, like like this golden raisin marzipani, uh, uh, lovely sort of leaning sweet, le leaning confectionery kind of nose. Throw, throw a scoop of vanilla ice cream in there too. But then like add some gunpowder green tea, add a little bit of a, 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 a sort of green herbaceous note. A little like um, hardwood smoke, like maple wood smoke. Um, there's a little bit of, of cigar uh, ashtray in here, which I which I'm enjoying very much. Because they've been smoking some nice cigars, like not 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 the stinky Maduros. This is a, like, you know, some natural leaf uh, Nicaraguan stuff or something something like that, you know, or you know, maybe even some some very kind of seedy, uh, actually, you know actual Cuban uh, uh, smokes, that kind of thing. It's kind of, it's kind of actually American a little bit. 
I don't think they finished this in American oak, but I mean, something about, maybe it's just the, the importer. It's sort of um, suggest, adding suggestions to my brain, but something in this is reminding me of bourbon oak. Um, that can't be right, though. Um, there's a little camphor, a little, um, a little fresh paint, which I like. Uh, a little uh, candy ginger, some dried grass in there. It's nice, um, but I mean, it's completely outclassed by this guy. Um, and this is more expensive. On the palette, hmm. But still very nice. Oh, very nice actually. I mean, if you just wanted to buy an XO and just to throw it on the table, this would do it, man. Um, there's a balance between, you know, oaky spiky spiciness and kind of raisin and, you know, sweetness. Um, some black pepper, some wood tannins. Um, but also like, you know, some, some uh, fruit. What is that? Like a fruity, it's not, it's not fruit pulp. It's more like fruit skins. Mm. Mm-hmm. Take your safety razor and just, just skin your peaches and your grapes and your lychee fruits and your a little bit of pear too. Skin your pear, take the skins, put them in your mouth. That's kind of what this tastes like. Even a little orange too. A little suggestion of orange pith. Um camphor again. Cigar ash again. Um, vanilla again. Now, more, more vanilla essence than the ice cream thing. It's not actually that creamy, this stuff. Um, a little bit of a rye note, like um, like you took some, some Knob Creek rye and you just kind of dumped it into your cognac, that kind of thing. Um, mm, mm. Correction, not rye, Buffalo Trace mash bill too. And some fresh baklava. Um, I've been meaning to throw baklava into my tasting most more often. It's most definitely shown, shown up here, that sort of candied, um, confectionery, nutty thing. Oh, absolutely. A little bit of sort of sour wood, wood sour on the finish, like uh, along with some, some like wet, Grassiness, like like sour grass. I don't know how to explain it. Um, feels a bit a bit older than this, or at least has more more time than oak. But this is just more going on, honestly. Um, I'm gonna give this a squirt of water, and we'll come back to it. Not a big one, and we'll move on to the beast. Um, okay, Daniel Boyu. Brew de Vue. I think that's, I'm not going to be able to pronounce anything. Um, Royale, uh, unfiltered, also from the Grand Champagne. 60% um, alcohol by volume. 60% alcohol by volume. And look at that color. I mean, that is a terrifying color. Like that, Armagnacs don't get this dark. And Armagnacs tend to be aged in like just a crap load of new French oak. Um, okay, uh, Daniel Boyu is a producer I've been a fan of for a long time. This, this is something I threw into the first uh, brandy tasting I ever did um, because it just seemed like, you know, a, a 60, 120 proof, you know, bomb from the cognac region would be a fun thing to throw at people. Uh, and it, it got some confusion, but also some appreciation. So I'm coming back to it now. Uh, the price point has jumped, but uh, we're going to see what we got. Okay. Um, be afraid. Okay. Um, hugely woody. Um, I mean, huge everything, but but the wood is. It smells. Honestly, it smells like an Armagnac. You would come to this and you would nose it. Sort of. If if it wasn't for the 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 extra alcohol nip. The extra force from that just sheer sixty percent volumeness to the of this, you could uh, mistake this for for an old Armagnac. Um, 
I think back in the day, this used to be 15 years old. And I assume it's still somewhere around there, but I mean, I, I you know, it doesn't come across any younger than that, put it that way. And, but it does come across like m the majority of this and not all of it was aged in fresh oak. And just tons of oak. So black pepper, like some, some kind of like, like just overproof Demerara rum, honestly, is, is one note. Um, like smoked toffee, prunes, but also coffee cake, some figs in there. Um, like fresh coffee grinds, like, I don't know, guatemelan coffee grinds, not, you know, light roasted, um, well, medium roasted, um, Guatemalan coffee grinds. Some flourless chocolate cake, um, maybe with uh, 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 some dried fruit butter topping stuff on top. Um, some birch beer, just like wood bark, honestly. It, it, there's tons and tons of wood on this. Like, um, if you ask me what the what the to guess what the original distillate was like, I would not be able to tell you. There's there's nothing left. Which, which has its own charm, I guess. Um, old furniture, um, uh, Perique, uh, um, tobacco, like, well, really more like, like flake tobacco, like a Virginia flake with, um, with, a, uh, some Perique in there. Soy sauce, weirdly enough. And then a little, like, fresh newspaper. Um, and then like, like minerality, I mean, just rocks everywhere. I mean, on top of the, the woodiness everywhere, this is, it's a huge obnoxious nose. All right. Um, and I'm a little ter terrified to try this cause it's going to dry out my whole mouth, but here we go. Oh. Uh, okay, um, where, where to begin? Okay, Armagnac is the closest point of reference you're going to get to something like this. Um, huge, fresh French oak note on this. Wow. But it's Armagnac by way of like Hamilton 151 and George T. Stagg. This is, um, oh, okay, one more time. Wood, wood tannins, big, just sucks all the moisture out of your mouth. Um, uh, like big malty tea, like awesome tea. Coffee cake again, coffee, um, like, um, but not like, like nice coffee. This is like, like, uh, the dregs of hotel stuff. Um, we're kind of there. We're kind of like, you know, like your, your desk, it's like eight, three o'clock and you're trying to stay awake and you just need... You just grab the hotel coffee and you just go, oh, that, that kind of thing. Um, black pepper all over the place. Dates. Mm. Oh. It's, whoa. All the moisture. The tannins are incredible. Dates, figs, prunes, malted milk balls. No, wait. Like Ovaltine. Just straight up Ovaltine. You're like, the, not even like the drink. Just take the powder and throw it into your mouth. Um, just tons of drying, aggressive mouth coating French wood. Um, but it is, okay. What what makes this work is the, on the back end, this actually has like a nice cooling note. There's some, um, some menthol. There's a little bit of clove in there. Um, ooh, it's a big boy though. This is... Uh, This is not inexpensive, but I mean, if you if you drink, you know, big four squares, the um, the nobiliary, um, if you drink George Staggs or Stag Juniors, or you know, even like the big obnoxious, you know, 25, 30 year old Armagnacs, if that's your jam, and you're you're rolling deep, you got the money for this. This is this this should be on your radar. I mean, this is. 
this is right in that territory of just like wood on top of wood on top of wood. Um, and it's very well done, actually. I'm going to give this a couple thousand squirts of water, and we'll come back to it in a minute. Um, at least four. I mean, it needs, needs at least four. Ooh, five. Um, God almighty. This is heavy stuff. I mean... Wow. Um, okay, here we, here we go back to this guy. Uh, if assuming my palette can is still able to um, capture anything that left. All right, um, Jean Filiou, La Pouillade, um, round two. This time with a little bit of water in it to open it up. On the nose. It's actually the um, the minerality that comes out a little bit more. You're getting sort of rock smoke. Um, oh my god, this is this has suddenly become almost Kleinlish like um, or Ben Nevis um, f like fruit wax minerality rocks um, uh, some camphor coming through. Um, no, no, not 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 um, not Kleinlich, not those guys, not the Highlanders. This is more like an old school Lowlander. This reminds me of like Lynn Lithgow, which doesn't exist anymore. But um, um, just those sort of old school, um, like double distilled Lowland malts that that acted like Highland malts, but sort of more restrained, more light in character, more more of an ensemble cast, uh, more complex um, in, in, in the, uh, not, not more complex in terms of like the difference that things were balanced off against each other rather than any one thing dominating. Yeah, on the palette, mm hmm mm hmm yeah, again, ooh. Okay, you're also getting more sort of smoky minerality things going on. More rocks, more smoke, more wax. Um, but the sweetness is also coming through. A little bit more sort of gravy raisininess, which I'm enjoying. Yeah, this is just, this reminds me of... I've only had one Lith Lynn Lithgow in my life. It was, um, I think, a 75. Five from McKillop's Choice, and it's it's still one of my favorite whiskeys of all time. I loved that that bottle. Um, it was just such a lovely, light-hearted, but at the same time complex and interesting um, style. And this is kind of reminding me of that a little bit. Although it also reminds me of stuff like Kleinlish. This is you know if you are a Highland Scotch fan, like like check this out. This is this is worth your time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I gotta buy more from these folks. Um God damn, Jean Fou Um you, <laughs> This is your entry level offering? I'm gonna give this eighty seven points out of a hundred. No, eighty seven plus. Um I will add the plus. This deserves the plus. Uh this is really good. Um I'm just drinking this now. This, this is not <laughs> hold on. You can, you can wait while I just finish enjoying this. God damn, it's good, though. Um, yeah, highly recommended. Not expensive. I mean, real cognac. I mean, get it. It's, it's get it. Um, all right, moving on. I mean, hang on. Let me do just a full bottle of this Douce, right? Cost about fifty bucks. For ten bucks more, you can have a bottle of this. Ten bucks more. That's called, it's your huge entry level and prices for getting in. Once you're in, though, you pay a little bit more, and man, does just Kanye deliver for you. Um, okay, moving on uh, to the uh, the Bard Seth, uh, with now with a little bit of water in it. So Petite Champagne XO. Um, 
Not much that's changed, frankly. Um, it's maybe a little more raisiny now. A little more, well, like raisin skin more so than like actual raisin, like just skin. I already did that joke, I guess. Um, skinned raisin. Let's go with that. Um, a little more, a little um, confectioner's fudge thrown in. So no chocolate, just like, just like sugar and butter. A little of that. Um, kind of reminds me of what it was before. <laughs> I mean, I'm still enjoying that though. Um, yeah, same thing. Um, gets a little more ashy, a little more wood spicy, but wood comes out a little bit more. I'm enjoying the tannins. Um, oh, it's nice though. Um, Yeah, a little more, um, what is that? Uh, a little more like of like a cane syrup sweetness coming through, a little bit of a kind of rocky, minerally sweetness. But I like it. Um, it's just like in this, in this, it's in the death seat after the Jean Filiou, and even, even like, like outside of that death seat, you know, this is an 85 point cognac. Good, just a little bit outclassed in this company. Um, and uh, moving on to the last uh, option, the Daniel Beaulieu, now brought down to a to a, a sipping proof. Um, so let's see what we got here. Daniel Beaulieu Royal, um, in the mother of all new oak. Um, here we go. Um, Okay, sawdust and like cinnamon sticks. You just threw a you went into a woodworking shop and just threw cinnamon sticks up in the air. Um, that's kind of what I'm getting. A little more sweetness coming through now, though. This is actually a really nice nose now. Um, golden raisins, kind of a cordial note, like a little um, cordial, but also, also that the cordial cherry thing coming through. Um, black tea. More, more the leaves and the actual tea. Um, uh, Lakeland tobacco again. That's kind of kind of coming through. That sort of, um, you know, like a Gewurth rope tobacco. It, rope tobacco is this thing that pipe smokers have, where it's they, it's literally tobacco sole wrapped up in a rope, and you sort of get a knife and you chop up bits and you stuff in your pipe. And boy, will that that stuff get you screwed up. Um, that's what I'm getting on the nose, though. Uh, Um, but also like there's like there's a little bit of a coffee shot note like um not a latte stronger than a latte this is like a cortado note and a little rust it's tons of fun I mean this is just an, and it's pleasant um it's a big boy but you know <laughs> I'm enjoying this this is not my preferred style um but you have you got to respect to something like this uh for how outrageous it is. Mm hmm Oh, I may, t I may pull that out, that back. Not, outrageous is the bad, so it's huge, but it's actually very balanced at the same time. Um, on sort of coffee grinds, a little molasses now, um, you know, like light, lighter molasses. Not, we're not, we're not going into blackstrap territory here. White pepper, um, uh, like old furniture, old chairs, um, a little bit of a Snickers bar note. Uh, so, you know, smother Snickers bars all over your old furniture, and that's kind of what you're getting here. Mm. Dried fruit, lots of baking spice to use that, that over, overused uh, tasting note. Um, Cuban cigars, like, like not the top, this is like Trinidad's. This is like, you know, working man's Cuban cigars, man. Um, yeah, I mean this, if you're into big rums, big bourbons, um, Armagnacs, 
even like Sherry Malt fans would get a bit like if if you like um, Aberlauer Abana, um, you know, uh, one oh five uh, that kind of thing. Like you know, this this should also be on your radar. Like all those fans of just big wood driven uh, spirits should be looking at this. This is this is well worth your consideration. Um, Damn it. Um, in my heart of hearts, I probably like want to drink more this more. This is probably objectively better. I'm going to give this 80, 88 points out of 100. But let me tell you, this is not the one I'm going to be drinking for the rest of the night. I'm going to finish this off, and um, if I pour a second glass, it's going to be this guy. Um, yeah, this is, in terms of value, um, I, I, again, you know, like, if if you like your your big spirits, big woody spirits, this you want this. Give these people your money. They they make they are making what you want to buy. But in terms of classiness, in terms of like why uh, and how cognac offers something different, like this this is this is terrific. This is you know you know light light in character, but just packing bringing enormous complexity. Um, to the party, and I think that's uh, it, it's doing it in a way which which is um, a little bit different from everything I can think of it in the rest of the spirit scene at the moment. Um, so I, for me, this is like the the winner, not on points, but on not on style, not like on I don't know on um, in, in in spirit, winner in spirit. Let's call it the winner in spirit. Um, um, that's all I got. Uh, cognac deserves a second look on your part. I know you had that bad experience in in, uh, in college when someone brought some Hennessy Henny v VS, and it was so awful you just had to, had to mix it with like Sprite and stuff. Um, those aren't your only options in cognac anymore. There's lots better out there, and um, these three would be perfectly good starting points. So um, go seek them out if that's kind of what you're into. Anyhow. That's what I got. Um, hope this is helpful and uh, cheers.